Great to have you back here on The Breakfast. Uh, our final conversation this morning is going to be talking of financial troubles and the controversy that emerged over the weekend after the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obasaki, alleged that the Nigerian government printed as much as 60 billion naira to augment March uh, allocation. Uh, we are joined this morning by Mr. Aditilewa Adibajo, a financial analyst. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. There's been um, a lot of uh, con conversations, you know, since uh, this uh, statement was made by the Edo uh, State Governor. Uh, there's people who have, you know, shared their fears of where we're headed as a nation with regards to our economy and our finances. And there's those who say, oh, it's not a problem. Every country prints money. This, this is nothing to be worried about. Um, what exactly are your thoughts? Do you agree that this really shouldn't be an issue because many countries across the world print their own money and it's nothing? Well, um, we have to take a look at the facts. I think what is important is that, um, yes, there is what you call the ways and means. And when you have a situation where... Uh, in th with the pandemic and a lot of all these things, a lot of the central bank interventions are done with this sort of uh, financing. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you have to take a look at the Nigerian situation and it's important for us not to mix apples with oranges. What are the facts? Nigeria's debt stock stands now at 86 billion US dollars. Five years ago, the external debt was only 10 billion. That's had, that has multiplied by three times in five years to, to like uh, from $10 billion to like $33 billion. So that is where the cause of concern is. Mm -hmm. Then the domestic debt stock has gone up by about 10 trillion, 10 to 15 trillion in just five years from about maybe 15 now we're looking at about um, 65. So the total debt stock now is at $85 billion and if we're not careful can hit $100 billion. So what you ask yourself, first of all, is what, is what have we been doing with all this debt in the last five years? The unfortunate thing about the debt of the last five years, most of it has gone into financing the budget deficit and more or less financing recurrent expenditure, i.e., in simple terms, we have been borrowing to pay salaries instead of borrowing to make investments. So that's number one. Number two. Um, let's take a look at the Central Bank Act. There is a, the Central Bank is guided by laws and procedures. Mm -hmm. And one of the procedures is that the Central Bank should not finance more than a certain percentage of the government deficit directly. Mm -hmm. okay, but the Central Bank has exceeded these limits. So that is really where the problem is. Mm -hmm. Then you have to take a look at the next thing, which is the Fiscal Responsibility Act, which guides government expenditure. Uh, the head of state himself, in his budget speech, uh, alluded to the fact that he have exceeded. Are you talking about the, the president? Guidance. Yes, the president. Yes, okay. he has exceeded the uh, in his budget speech. The last budget speech ex uh, alluded to the fact that they have violated the guidelines of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. So right now, the my own issue is the fact that we have uh, violations of both the Central Bank Act and the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Mm -hmm. And of course, maybe because of the situation of the pandemic and the fact that we entered in, into a recession. So the government needs to make that adjustment to be able to regularize its position um, through the National Assembly by passing laws and to be able to see things. And the central bank needs to refinance some of its, um, its loans that it has used to finance the deficit and push it into the right instrument, which are more like market-driven instruments. Mm. So this is really where the challenge is. There's a need for the government to do some serious financial restructuring to be able to get within the terms of the law. That is really where the problem is. So let me pick your brains a bit, right? Is that okay? So you talked about um, debt and how the monies are being spent. Yes. So it's not so much the debt but how the monies have been spent, yes. right? And you economists would also say that you spend your way out of a recession. Yes. Is that right? That's right. And so Nigeria was able to come out of a recession uh, recently, and mm. the, it shocked the IMF. So is this totally a bad situation, or it just needs to be tweaked a bit? It is a bad situation. Yeah. You are in fiscal deficit. Uh, you are violating your Fiscal Responsibility Act, mm. and you're also violating your Central Bank Act. So we need to move back and we need to align with the term, tenements of those acts. So the central bank needs to refinance a significant amount of its debt. And the federal government also needs to be able to uh, manage its finances. 
85 percent, 85 to 90 percent of government revenues is go currently going towards debt service. Uh, it's not sustainable. Then lies the problem. So, um, and that is why you see that, okay, maybe they had to print money to augment that whole area. But there's a lot of structural adjustment and a lot of financial restructuring because of the problems of the weak economic growth and the pandemic. So the central bank needs to refinance a lot of its debt and this, the, the Ministry of Finance needs to go through a lot of structural adjustments mm. to be able to uh, meet the terms of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. I'm not sure how we would achieve all of this, but people have also mentioned, in this conversation, people have mentioned Venezuela and Zimbabwe and you know other countries that we're not trying to be like um, economically. Mm. Um, are, are, there, are those fears uh, genuine? And you know, can people say things like that, that if we're not careful, we might get to that point where the Naira gets, you know, um, to the level that Venezuela's um, uh, currency got. Well, yes. I mean, if we're not careful, that's the word, that's the key word. You know, this is how it starts. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that your, your revenues, your revenues can no longer, you're using 90% of your revenues to service debt. That is a, a very, very strong signal. Mm -hmm. So you need to go through a lot of structural adjustments to be able to reverse this situation. So what we're saying is that we understand the situation, we understand there's been a pandemic, but we understand also that the economic situation is also not very good because right now the problem of Nigeria now is stagflation, mm -hmm. high unemployment, low economic growth, and these are very severe issues. So this stagflation situation is worse than the recession. Mm -hmm. Coming out of a recession uh, does not really mean much. Our population is growing at 3.5% per annum. In the last five, six years, our economy has grown only by 2.9% as the highest. And within that last five years, we've seen two recessions. So basically, our, our economic growth in the last five years has not met the level of our population growth. Hmm. So these really are the challenges we have. So you can now begin to see that the symptoms, you're now having fiscal challenges on top of all these things. So there's a need for a serious structural adjustment of the Nigerian economy on the fiscal side and on the monetary side. But the monetary side, the central bank is holding their ground and they've done what they need to do. So all they just need to do is to refinance a lot of these debts and put them into the right debt instrument to comply with the tenements of the CBN Act. So there is hope, right? There, there is always hope. There is if always you do, hope. There, if you do, it's now the question of there is hope. What you need to do is you need to do the right things. You need okay. to implement the right policies, and okay. then you see the results. Okay, it's oh. worthy to note that in one of the papers um, you and I read this yeah, morning, the, the federal government, denied. yeah, denied. I didn't print any monies, like the governor alleged. Yes, I mean, and that is the right of the central bank has a right of reply. And I think that is very important for them to say that they didn't, because they are the ones that manage the ways and means. You know, so, and their own position must also be met with that of the governor. But the issues that we're talking about that we have, those ones remain relevant. And that is why I went through the facts. You know, so there is a CBN Act and there's a Fiscal Responsibility Act. And right now, we're not in line with the tenements of that act. And, you know, we need to get to realignment. Well, hopefully, uh, there's a member of the uh, government's uh, financial team and the CBN and the Minister of Finance understand some of all these things as well as you do, and we maybe take the right steps. No, um, definitely. I think uh, the central bank from its last policy pronouncements in the last NPC, I think they addressed all these issues head on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the question is that they know they're printing, but you know they have a program. And, you know, and that is what they've done with a lot of the CBN interventions that you've seen. I think that's a safe place to land, Asalgi. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we, we had this conversation without, um, it, without fear mongering. And, yes. you know, and everyone who, because I've, re I've read a lot of the reactions to this online, and everyone just keeps mentioning Venezuela yeah. and Zimbabwe. You know, and that's the fear. That, yeah, exactly. You see, you see, everybody's afraid that, look, let us manage this situation properly and address these issues head on now mm -hmm. so that we don't get to that level. Hopefully we don't. We don't. We don't yeah. um, Aditi Lewa Adibajo, thank you so much thank for you. your time this morning. Thanks for speaking with us and making us uh, not so scared. Of where we're <laughs> That's all we have for you this morning. Absolutely. It's been a very interesting Monday morning, of course, talking about the NARD uh, suspension of their strike, HREA and their workshop that is coming up in a day or a little above a day. 
And of course, uh, the statements by Governor Godwin of Basaki of Edo State. Mm -hmm. We want to wish you guys a very interesting Monday ahead. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember to catch up on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa Absolutely. on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel. Yeah, thank you for hanging out with us today. And do have a good day. I am Vivian Oguche. And I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa.